it's Anne Marie here. Welcome to another Sunday School video. Um, coming to you from the first time from my new desk tucked in the corner of my living room. Don't be alarmed at this. This here is just a thing for the shelf, which I'm going to try really hard not to hit my head on the next time I stand up on. Haven't done it yet, but we shall see. We are going to continue our series looking through the books of the Bible. So without any further ado or any more rambling that I am prone to do in front of a camera, Let's crack on and have a look at the next selection of books in the Bible. Here we go. Nehemiah. And the key word is walls. We all know what walls are. Some are big and tall. Some we can jump over. Some are for houses. And some are to keep cities safe. Although that's a little bit less important these days. Exeter isn't about to get raided by Romans or anything. Okay, so Nehemiah is all about God rebuilding his people. We've been through a time uh, looking at some of the books in the Bible so far about a time when the Israelites, God's people, were in exile away from their homeland that God had given them. It's a really tough time for them. So for God to rebuild them shows that God is faithful to his promises. And it's a real time of celebration, but also reflection for the Israelites as they think about the choices that led them to that exile and just how great God is to have brought them back home. So last week, Jess showed us how the people began to rebuild the temple and to worship God there. But there was still another problem. There was still more building to do. You see, the city walls weren't rebuilt yet. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to happen. Well, the Jerusalem walls would have been a lot more sturdy than that. But God made it possible for Nehemiah to return to his people's homeland. And he put that desire on Nehemiah's heart to rebuild the city walls so that the people could worship God in safety. Now, this wasn't easy for Nehemiah. He didn't just decide to pack his suitcase and go off and rebuild the walls. Now, he was the cupbearer to the king of Persia, a really important job. So it would have been really hard for him to ask to be able to go home and rebuild those walls. And people mocked him, people laughed at him. The enemies of God's people were ready to attack and to make fun of them, to bully them all the time while the Israelites were there rebuilding the walls. They had to have people on watch all of the time. But Nehemiah knew that with God's help, those walls would be rebuilt. Esther. And there isn't really one key word for this one, more of a phrase. It's the Queen of Persia. As you might have guessed, Esther's keywords are Queen of Persia, because that's exactly what she became. Esther's story takes place in Persia, when many of God's people were still in exile. This is another book of the Bible where God moves behind the scenes. Esther is such a an amazing story. It's really dramatic. It's really great. Um, one of my top 10 Bible books, if you're allowed to pick favourites. We all do. Don't lie. Don't pretend. Grown-ups, I know you do, because we all do. It's just how we are. But Esther, a great story. Esther replaces a banished queen, and then with the help of her uncle Mordecai and the courage given to her by God, she helps save thousands and thousands and thousands of people's lives. That's pretty incredible. So Mordecai is really important in this story because he encourages Esther to see where God has put her. He says to her, who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Well, in this story, in this book, we see how God works behind the scenes by putting people in the right place at the right time. Job. Job's key word is sovereignty. Sovereignty means kingship. And Job is a book that points us towards how God is in control. He is the king of kings and the king of everything. Now, Job's story doesn't actually take place in the exile. This is because the Bible likes to do a bit of time travel and it doesn't happen from start to finish in the same way that other books do. So we're kind of jumping out of like a timeline order of the way that things happened in history here. 
but that's okay. This is why the Bible is cool. You get to jump around through time and explore different parts of history. It's awesome. Now, Job is a really interesting story. It's quite difficult in some ways because we see Job loses everything. He loses his home. He loses his family. He loses all of the money and the fortune that he had. He loses all of his riches. He loses his respect in the community as well. He goes from kind of a 10 to a, a zero, kind of nothing. And that's really heartbreaking to see. It's a really hard story because Job didn't do anything wrong. But we can also kind of relate to this story in Job because when we look around and we see bad things happening, we also really want to know why. Job also searches for a reason and his friends offer their opinions too, but nothing really seems to sit right. Every time they come up with an answer, Job says, it's not really the answer. That's not really how it is. Until later on, towards the end of the book, God himself speaks to Job and he reminds him actually that God himself is the one who's in control. Not people, not Job's friends, not the community, not Job. In fact, God says, are you the one who has the snow store piled up? Are you the one who sends the lightning? Are you the one who sends the rain on the good and the bad? And all of these things teach Job that God is the one in control. In the end, Job realises that he's in the hands of a loving and sovereign God. And God builds him back up and gives him even more than he had before. And Job praises God. Speaking of praising God, our next book is Psalms. And the key word for Psalms is worship. When we think of worship, we often think about singing in church, but worship is more than just that. It's about spending time with God and saying thank you to him. It's talking about the things we think and feel and listening to what God has to say. It's something we can do in lots of different ways. But of course, the most obvious way that we can worship is through music and singing. We don't really use songbooks very much in church, unless you're in the music group, then you might use them. Uh, but that's exactly what Psalms is. It's a book full of songs. It's a collection uh, from about seven different authors, spanning about a thousand years. So that's quite a lot of songs. And King David, who we've heard a lot about in some of the other books of the Bible, wrote loads of songs. He was a great songwriter, and some of my favourite psalms were written by King David. Psalms is my absolute favourite, because you can find every single emotion possible. If you are happy, there's a psalm that helps you to praise God for that, and to say thank you for the things you might be happy about. If you're feeling sad... There are songs that kind of take you to God with your sadness in there. If you're feeling scared, if you're feeling angry or confused, like maybe Job was, there are psalms that kind of go through those emotions as well. However you're feeling, there's a psalm that matches up. So as I've been looking at these books, I've kind of noticed that there's a little bit of a theme that kind of runs all the way through them. Um, that really helps me to think about trusting God, who is in charge of everything, no matter what's going on in the world, whether I understand it and I can see what God is doing or not. And that's really cool. So even when we feel like our lives or the world around us is just completely mad and going out of control, that's the time when we need to remember who is King of Kings, who is in charge, even if we can't see what God is doing. We can trust that he is in control. Okay, that will do for now. Well done, everyone. Thank you for listening. Keep learning those keywords. Keep learning that song. Let's get it really stuck in our heads because it's really, really helpful. Um, but yeah, that is enough from me today. So I will see you again in another video. But for now, take care, stay safe, and I will see you again another time. Bye-bye. <laughs>